All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about JavaScript variables, arrays, and objects. But before we get into that, I want to show you the different ways that we can output data using JavaScript. So we have just an index.html file with our basic HTML structure. And what we're going to do is in the body, we're going to go down to the bottom right above the ending body tag and put in a script tag. All right, and in here we can put in line, we can put our JavaScript. All right, so I just want to show you the different ways that we can output. So what we'll be mostly using is console.log. And what that'll do is it will log whatever we want to the console. So let's just say hello world and save it. And then if we run this in the browser, you won't see anything here, but if you hit F12, I know it's F12 in Chrome and, and Firefox. Those are really the only two browsers I use, but I know that IE and Safari also have tools that you can use. All right, and you can see that if you make sure you click the console tab and it's giving us hello world. Okay, so whatever we log out in the console will show down here. So that's the that's what we'll be using for the most part. But there are some other things we can do. Uh, we could use document.write. Okay, so write is a method that we can run from the document object. And whatever we put in here, let's go ahead and save it, reload, and that'll output on the screen, okay, wherever we put the script tags. So if we were to say uh, up here, if we write test, and down here we'll write testing, reload, you can see that hello world is in the middle of those two. So wherever we were to put the script tags, um, but this isn't really uh, a good way to output data. You don't want to have script tags all over the place. All right, but you can do that. Another way that we could output data is through an alert. Okay, so we have the window object, and then that has uh, an alert method or function. I'll say hello world, reload, and you can see we get this pop up, this alert box with hello world. All right, and you don't you actually don't even need to use window dot you could just do alert and that'll do the same thing all right and then the last method of output i'm going to show you is inner html so with this what we would do is let's say we have a div we'll give it an id of test and then down here we could say document dot get element by id and the elements ID is test. And then we can say dot inner HTML equals, and then whatever we want, we'll say hello world. If we go and we reload, now you can see wherever we put this div with the ID of test, it's gonna output hello world. All right, so those are the main methods of output. So next thing we're gonna do is move on to variables. And we touched on variables very, very briefly in the last video. So what we can do is set a variable with the keyword var. So if we were to say var x, that's gonna create uh, a variable called x. Now if we go and we console.log x, you'll see that it comes up undefined, okay? Because we didn't, we didn't assign it to a value. So what we can do is say x equals five, and then when we reload, we'll get five. Okay, and of course, you, to make this a little shorter, we could just say var x equals 5, just like that. All right, now we can also do simple arithmetic. If we say var y equals 10, and basically we can do some algebra. So if we console log x plus y, that gives us 15. Okay, so those are numbers or integers that we're assigning to those variables. We can also do strings. So if we were to say var person equals John Doe, and then we'll console log person, okay, we get John Doe. So this is a string, and a string can, has to be wrapped in quotes, and it can be either single or double quotes. Now let's say we want to use this in a, in a sentence, in a string that we console log. So we'll say, uh, remember strings have quotes, we'll say my 
name is. And if we were to go like that, you can see we get my name is person, and that's not what we want. To make this an actual variable, we have to concatenate that onto this string. So to do that, we use a plus sign. Okay, so now if we reload, you can see it says my name is John Doe. All right, now if we want to assign multiple variables on one line, we could do that. So let's say var a equals one, and then we can put a comma, b equals two, c equals three. And then if we were to console log b, reload, and you can see we get two. Okay, so it saves a little bit of space. So variables are a pretty simple uh, aspect of JavaScript. So now let's talk about arrays. And arrays are basically, uh, they allow you to have multiple values within one variable. So let's do an example here. We'll create a variable called animals and we're going to set that to a set of square brackets which represents an array and then we're going to put some values in here. We'll say dog, cat, and these are strings, but of course you could put numbers. And let's say horse. Okay, so we have this array of animals. And we can actually console log that. And down here you'll see we have our array. If we click that arrow, it'll show us each individual value. Now if we want to target one of these, like let's say we just want cat, then we can say console log animals, open up a set of brackets, put in one, reload, and now you can see we get cat. All right, the reason that it's one and not two is because arrays are zero based. So this would be zero, one, two. Okay, and adding to this is also really easy. We could say animals, and we know that this is the, it'll be the third index, zero, one, two, three and set that to let's say cow all right now if we console.log animals you'll see that cow is now included on the end now this is one way to create an array we can also use the uh, the new keyword so I'm just going to show you this would be the way I would suggest but just to give you an uh, an alternate way we could say animals equals new array and then a set of parentheses and then we can say dog cat horse okay we reload we get the same thing okay so just another way to do it but i i would suggest doing it this way now another way to add something to an array is to use the push method so we can say animals dot push and in here we'll say pig okay now if we console log it you'll see that pig is now added to the end so there's a few different ways to do some of these things now this push method is available to us because an array is actually an object okay just about everything can be considered an object in JavaScript so it has its own set of of methods and properties okay so this is a method that pushes on to the array all right now we also have um, for instance length which is a property so let's say console.log animals dot length and what that gives us if we reload you can see it gives us a five it gives us the number of items in an array so we start out with three we added cow which is four and then we added pig which is five. Okay, another uh, method that's available to us is sort. So if we were to paste that in and we'll say animals dot sort and that's a method or a function so it needs parentheses. Reload and now you can see that it gives us the array but it's now sorted in alphabetical order. Now we also have associative arrays where we can actually define the index to be something other than just a number. So let me just comment that out. And what we'll do here is let's say uh, we'll create var person. 
and we'll set it to an empty array and then we can add indexes to it so we'll say person name we'll set that to John Doe okay actually we don't want the var and let's say person age and we'll set that to 35 and then let's say city and we'll set that to New York and this should be lowercase okay so now we have this person this is an associative array because instead of just using 0 1 2 we're using actual words okay so if we want we can say console.log and let's just log person and now when we reload you can see that each value basically has its own key okay that's a set of key value pairs if we want just the name we can say person name and reload and we get the name so this works pretty much how objects work okay and that's what we're gonna look at next so to create an object let's create one called car and we'll set it to have a list of properties of key value pairs and they're gonna be wrapped this time in curly braces alright so we'll say uh, make will be Ford and we'll have model Mustang and year we'll say 1964 all right so we now have this car object let's go ahead and console log it okay we reload and you can see it tells us it's an object and it gives us the different fields okay just like an associative array and if we want to access a certain property we could simply do dot uh, we'll do dot make reload and we get Ford okay so instead of using the um, square brackets here like we did with the array we just use dot all right now we can also have an array of objects which is um, something that that uh, you you probably work with a lot especially when dealing with different API's when you fetch data from a server a lot of times it'll come back as JSON syntax uh, which is basically an, an array of objects so let's create a variable called cars and set it to a set of brackets and then in these brackets we will have objects okay so I'm just gonna grab what we have right here paste that in Okay, so that represents one car, and then we'll copy this. Make sure you put a comma there. And then we'll just change this up. We'll say uh, Impala. We'll say 19, I don't know, 78. This one. We'll say Toyota Camry. Uh, 2015 all right so now what we want to do is log this okay and then down here you'll see that we get these three objects we click on these arrows and that'll give us each of the fields all right so that is an array of objects if we want to access a certain one we can go ahead and use an index let's say one remember there's zero base so this would be one the Chevy reload that gives us the object if we want to focus in on one of the properties let's say dot model and that gives us Impala okay so we can easily access any of these objects and their properties alright so we're gonna stop here for now and I'll see you in the next video